Hey, welcome boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, Mirrorless Minutes episode number six zero. Mike Baining with uh, me, Jamie, here tonight. Um, it's boy Mike and I were just chatting up everything, <laughs> and I noticed it was eight. I'm like, let's let's hit the big green button and make this show go live. Um, yeah, I almost forgot we had to do a show. We just yeah. kept talking. <laughs> <laughs> Once I get going, there's no stopping. It's like, shut up, do the show. Uh, so a little change you might notice uh, in past shows that we had a lower thirds that would run along the bottom of the screen and it would mm -hmm. it would let you know who I am in case you didn't know who I was. Uh, that's gone. Thank you, Google, for changing yeah. stuff up and not telling us. Continually yeah. changing, yep. You know, eventually, you're going to come and see this in black and white, I think. The Google's yeah. going to take the color away next. <laughs> but uh, so, so here we are in 2017, um, new year. A lot of new stuff that's going to be uh, happening this year. I think uh, Mike and I are pretty excited about the direction things are headed. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk for just a second. Everybody that knows me on Facebook knows this backstory, but I know that there are people that watch on YouTube that don't know. Um, over, like, the last show that we did, um, I was I was unemployed. Uh, I've always had a day job. Um, and, you know, the, the photography, this podcast, you know, working with Olympus, that's always been like my side, my side hustle. Okay. As you know, somebody cooler than me would say. And, um, but I, w I was let go from my job two weeks before Christmas, stressful time. Still came here, made sure we did the show, put out some videos over the holiday break, uh, but landed a new job, uh, doing, uh, marketing. So I mean, digital marketer for a lighting company, go figure. So I was telling Mike before the show that my product photography lighting game is going to be upped a significant notch because they make some really high end stuff. So yeah. excited to be able to talk about that. Excited to be in a new career out of the manufacturing world and into something where I might wear this to work rather than, you know, a t-shirt and jeans or something like that. <laughs> but, uh, so that's what, cool. yeah, that's what's new with me. What's new with you, Mike? I think you're in, you're in the same room, but it's a different room now. Yeah, right? I'm in the I'm in the same room. I've, I've torn down everything because, believe it or not, I had all my lighting gear, which really <laughs> isn't that much. It's, it's too light. But uh, I had to take it all down because I had to do some product photography for work, and that's unusual in an HR career. Like, what kind of product <laughs> photography you do? Yeah. But uh, I can explain all that later when we go through our picture sharing time. But uh, yeah, just that and uh, enjoying the horrible. Uh, weather of course but uh at the same time looking forward to i've got uh, about less than 48 hours before i take off for the bahamas so sounds horrible uh, yeah i know it is rough <laughs> <laughs> i'm excited never, yeah, I, I just i've never been on a trip like this my wife and i've never been on one like this so this should be exciting you guys have it coming dude. yeah just nice relaxing um and no kids even though every one of them has asked to go uh, <laughs> All yeah. got a resounding no. <laughs> so I doubt not any of them. I don't know how much they ever watch this, but too bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've been a lot of years doing the vacations with them. You know, yep, they, yep. they got their own jobs and their own apartments. They can get their own vacation. <laughs> and I know it's a it's a getaway, husband and wife, relax. Yeah. Are, are you sneaking a camera with you? You think uh, maybe two uh shoot okay. it's four. No, <laughs> i'm just trying to figure out do i take the 300 or not the oh my God. <laughs> wow you can shoot know. to the other side of the island with the yeah tour. i know there's some kind of bird there's a bird tour and i'm, I'm trying, oh really yeah i'm trying to get hooked on to that because uh, i know it would be cool some exotic birds oh gosh so man. now i'm really psyched to bring that 300 but then i what am I, what am I going to give up from packing? You know, do I right, pack yeah. less socks? You're going to be, in, you're going to be, you're going to be in the islands. You don't need clothes. You just, that's true. That's true. You, that's, you know, in the Bahamas, 300. Man. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It should be interesting, but yeah, there's going to be, we've got a, uh, you're supposed to relax, but we do have a couple of things. I shouldn't yeah. say a couple. We have a few, you know, already planned snorkeling stuff. So I see that, the TG uh, tracker coming out for sure. Yeah. You know, going underwater, but if you, whatever I can do to get stuff underwater too, I'll do. Cool. Should just be fun though. A lot yeah. of fun. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, trying to hide the camera a little bit. <laughs> so it's probably too late for me to ask if I can go. Damn it. Yeah. Um, Bert, yeah Bert is definitely up my alley. Exactly. I, 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 I know. I know. I maybe I could text you and say, "What is this?" <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's what I'd have to do. You get the jealous response. Uh huh. <laughs> so, um, 
I guess I'll talk a little bit about some stuff, you know, uh, yeah. that happened, I guess, right around the last show um, and then right after the show. Uh, product. I wanted to talk about product. I hate that I mentioned product before the show. I was hoping people mm -hmm. weren't going to say, oh, my God, new Olympus product. What's he got? What, 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 what don't we know about yet? Um, I don't have anything new Olympus to share. <laughs> but I did want to share that I did a review and posted it over on my website, which I'll uh, link in the description below for this thing right here. And I don't remember really other than just maybe mentioning it on one of the previous shows. I don't know if I ever showed it off fully or not or explained it totally. Mm -hmm. But it's the Lens Baby Trio 28. And if I did do this already once, I'm showing my age because I, I really don't remember. I don't remember seeing it, but I'll tell you what, that looks crazy on the Pen F, man. <laughs> it is crazy. It's crazy on anything you put it on, Yeah. but it's silver and my Pen F is silver. So I thought, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on here. And here's the thing. Yeah. What do I shoot with on the Pen F? Mm -hmm. Primes. That's all I yeah. shoot with is primes. This is a 28 millimeter prime. So, oh, so, so you, have, you haven't broken your rule. I haven't yet. broken my rule. So I get to play with a new toy on the Pen F because I'm, again, for those who don't know, I'm shooting with nothing but primes on the pen f it's this little thing i'm doing to myself torture i guess um so anyways uh, if you're familiar with lens baby products at all they don't make what i would say like the most technically sharp lens ever made they don't make it's it's with lens baby it's not about having super fine detail in everything you do it's a little bit more about the aesthetic of what you're creating it's about and art right? it is it is exactly yeah. it it it's you know what art. it's a paintbrush yeah. Is, is what I is what I, I liken it to, you know. I mean, uh, the the Zuiko lenses mm -hmm. are like photocopiers. They're like bam, razor <laughs> sharp, super precise detail in every right. shot you do. These you're like painting the photo. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna get softer edges. You might get some different effects, and and that's exactly what this kind of does. You've got three different optics, you know, that you can just rotate this turret around and select the different optics. Each one has a completely unique property to it, and I'm gonna share sample images when we do our image share later. But the three optics that this has mm -hmm. are the sweet, the velvet, and the twist. The sweet kind Those of- Those names alone, Jamie, tell you yes. that it isn't the clear, you know, that it is art. <laughs> right, you know, so the sweet is, it's got a sweet spot. Dead center of the mm -hmm. frame, it's mm -hmm. actually really sharp. Um, mm -hmm. The velvet, almost the entire frame, just has this velvety, smooth, soft look to it. Um, I'm a landscape nature kind of guy. You really have to go outside of the box to figure out how to use some of these with those. Mm -hmm. but if you're shooting portraits, you get this really ethereal, like dreamy look to it. Um, the last optic on here is called the twist. And um, basically, if you've ever seen a Petzval lens or some of the really older like Helios lenses, mm -hmm. the way the yeah. optical design is, you get this almost like a twist in your bokeh. It's like this weird distortion. Um, and that's what the twist optic does here. These are all three optics that were at one point or currently still, I guess, sold as individual lenses for your camera. Um, you could probably save a buck or two if you go and buy the twist because you get all three of those optics in, in one lens. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'm going to share some images that were shot with it later on when we do our image share. Um, but if you're curious about it, you know, and want to see examples, a lot of them are just the examples I'm going to show tonight. Um, yeah. Then swing over to my website again. Link will be in the in the description below. But it's fun, you know. I, I'm all about that. I've got up on this shelf back there uh, about ten old lenses, and some of them are like really old, like we're talking seventy year old lenses. And it's fun to put something funky on your camera and just mm -hmm. not try to be like a pixel peeping, you know, super right. precision surgeon photographer, and just have fun with it. And that's kind of what Lens Baby does. Yeah, that's so, pretty cool. I saw some of the stuff you were sharing, and and so you, um, what what is that? Something like that run? What is it? So uh, this is, if I'm not mistaken, I don't have it pulled up. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say it's like about two seventy five, roughly, okay. and they make it for all the mounts, um, which is and it cool. Comes with those three things yeah, too. They're all right on it. It's all built right into it, so oh, you don't okay. have to like add anything to this. I'm trying to open up another window over here. Yes. <laughs> Screens all over the place. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so like I said, they make it for um, like all the mounts. And Lens Baby hasn't always made everything for Micro Four Thirds. Some of the stuff they made for Micro Four Thirds, some of it they didn't. Um, luckily, they make this for the Micro Four Thirds mount. Mm -hmm. I was really excited to see that because I really wanted yeah. to test run here. And and as a matter of you know 
full disclosure, you know, what have you, uh, lens baby <laughs> and this to me, I did not go out and buy this. So they sent it over for me to do a review. Um, it's probably gonna be going back soon. It's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's a bummer. It, it's 279 on their website. Um, but before it goes back, I plan on, um, I'm going to do some video with it. I'm just kind of curious to see what kind of look I can get with video. So again, yeah. I'm just trying to get outside the box. Does Tracy or Laura use that? No, you know, and I think that those are two people that would really be yeah, able to make yeah, this like thing that, shine. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. 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 So, you know, maybe it's something I need to talk <laughs> about. Maybe it needs to go from my house to theirs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what about you? Have you uh, have you messed around with anything new? Because, dude, you seem to, like, always have something new going yeah, on. Yeah, you know, um, boy, I tell you what, the, the Christmas time has just been – like, I've been focused on this this room. I was, like, I was telling uh, everyone what know before our pre-show ramble that we do. <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, making the house a smart house. So I got all this crazy – I mean, if you want to – Shoot me any questions on the Philips Hue system, you should go for it. That darn Lou Peoples, you know, my buddy Lou out here, he got me started on this. And he goes, yeah, I got like three Hue lights. I Now I'm up to like 14. I, I, when I drive within uh, 50 feet of the house, all the proper lights come on now at home before I walk in the door and everything. So we're going to have this thing. Like I want to get it like Iron Man, you know, where you <laughs> <laughs> just talk yeah. and things are happening. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, not, not to, uh, certainly is not making my wife very happy because she keeps turning the switches on and off. I told her she's got to leave that stuff alone. Now we just talk and tell it when they go on or off, but yeah, but yeah, so it hasn't been photography, but I will tell you in a related situation with this Hue app, you can take your favorite photos. This actually would be pretty cool. I'm looking at that photo behind you on your banner. You can take your photo and if you find a color, you just run your finger around the color that you want and the lights yeah. go to that color. So you could have your favorite sunset color oh, wow. portrayed yeah. in your, you know, in your room. And that, you know, to, to go to sleep to. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I mean that so you can throw your own photo in there. I didn't know that when I bought it. So it does have a photography, you know, yeah. swing to it, I guess. But uh, awesome. other than that, yeah, I have been working hard on on uh Working on Pro Capture on the AM oh, <laughs> on yeah. the M1 Mark II. I mean, yep. it's just, you know, I've been shooting basketball. I knew I was going to have a big, big break on uh, basketball. I had a project that I'm doing that I'll talk about when we do image share, and then uh, a game and just uh, wow, man, at Pro Capture. <laughs> are, are you during the image share? Will you have any photos to share of the basketball? Are those in your image share tonight? Yeah, they okay, actually. Cool. Actually, yeah, ninety percent are basketball. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, I have one that I'm going to go through thirteen of the fourteen photos. Okay. And, I, and I'll just whip through them. I won't go one by one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I won't talk about each one. But I just I had to put all thirteen. I started looking at. It and I go, I don't know which one to break out. They got to see how clear every single one of these is. Yeah, it's That's just funny. sick. I was speaking with a, a gentleman that works at a camera store here in Michigan. And he had all kinds of questions that a, uh, a customer who owns the, the EM one Mark one, mm -hmm. um, this customer was wondering if the Mark two would be appropriate for sports, if it was better than the Mark one. And, and I said, uh, well, you need to get a hold of Mike. I said, yeah. Mike's for shooting sports. <laughs> and it was literally the very next day you're posting those sports shots. And I'm like, Oh, oh, is that why you said, "Hey, Justin, look at this"? That's exactly. <laughs> I was why, wondering so. who, yeah, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess I, I got another product thing to talk about. Yeah. Um, and this, sure. this is like I've been so waiting for this for a long time, actually, for a really long time, and I finally did this. Um, mm -hmm. I pulled the trigger and have a EM1. Oh, hey, an EM1. Did you, where'd you find that? <laughs> now look at the look at the sensor in this one. Yeah, looks a little odd, Jamie. Like dark, maybe it's like dark. Uh, so. And the reason this is dark is because this uh, EM1 Mark One has had an infrared conversion done to it, and awesome. I've been wanting an infrared converted camera for quite a while. Um, and for those who know much about infrared, you know that they're different uh, nanometer wavelengths that you can right. get your filter uh, set at. And I went with an 830 nanometer cutoff for my infrared conversion. Um, that's just gonna really, at 830 nanometers, you are pretty much at a 100% monotone 
image. There is no color information making it to your sensor. If you go with something smaller like 720, yeah. um, there's still a little bit of color information there, which allows you to do things like um, color channel swapping where you get like the mm -hmm. crazy blue sky and then white foliage. Um, yeah, that won't happen with this. One. Right, yeah, you want a little bit higher because I, I have that pen, that EP5 or whatever. Yep. Yeah, and I, that's the one I have so can give you those crazy blue skies. Yep. But yeah, yours because I've uh, – well, I know you like that. I know you like that style. Yeah, so this is all just dedicated 100% to black and white photography. And the reason, well, there are a couple of reasons mm -hmm. I had this done to this camera. Um, but the main reason that really forced me into doing this um, now was that um, I've never done a project. I've always wanted to start a personal project, and I've had ideas for them. And a couple of them, you know, I kind of got started and then fell out of it for one reason mm -hmm. or another. But there was there's always been these like two projects in my head and um and one of them was a photo book using two different types of uh, photography techniques and um i got this camera because i thought i'm gonna hybridize that concept and basically do what i'm gonna tell you now the project for this year for me is going to be the infrared camera will always be with me uh, if when i walk out the door it's gonna be with me just like i always have a camera anyways but now i'll have two cameras with me all the time and if I see a scene that, you know, that I have to shoot, something that speaks to me, I'll mm -hmm. shoot it. I will have the other camera in my hand. I will pop the lens off and put it on the other camera if I need to do, you know, that thing so that I can match focal lengths. And I'm going to reshoot that that scene again in infrared. And the what I, what I hope to get out of this at the end of the year is a photo book where on, like, the left-facing page, Mm -hmm. is you know the infrared image and then on the right facing page is the full color image or vice versa it just depends on how yeah. i end up formatting this but um you know basically uh it's the i'm going to title the book spectrum and it's just going to be because you're looking at different spectrums you know of light you know whether it's visible light or invisible through infrared and just the difference between the two scenes one in full color yeah. vibrant and the other one stark and contrasty in yeah. black and white so pretty, that's my pretty appropriate now that you uh, are working for a light company eh? yeah um, definitely <laughs> it's, 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 I, it's i've known for a while what you wanted to do yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. so, <laughs> all yep. happened. Yeah. yeah it's definitely weird how stuff like that works out but mm -hmm. um and i'll put a link in the uh in the show description below of the the service that I used, um, the company's Life Pixel. Uh, that's where Mike had his done. Yeah. I know our buddy Great Alex place, McClure, Alex had his mm -hmm. done there as well. Um, and I'm actually going to have a gentleman from Life Pixel. He's going to be on the show. Yeah. I'm planning on that towards the end of February sometime. I told him I want to get him on once I've had enough time to shoot with the camera and um, get some images bankrolled here, and just have him on to talk about you know the process of you know what it takes to convert and you know what the different wavelengths mean you know and what you can do with those so yeah, yeah. That, cool. that's, that's gonna be great because it, it is a different type of photography and you have to get into it to understand that you know what it can do oh yeah um, definitely you know, so it but it, again that's like one of those exciting things it's it's great we both we both have projects this year yeah um, you know on the heels of uh, me coming back from this trip i discussed that next friday i'm heading out on my craze uh, first Chicago squared trip up by myself for three days out into Chicago. And uh, in fact, I was talking to Megan Cran of my hair today, just about the whole, you know, personal project where to start and, you know, and everything's like, Oh, I want to get the website going. I want to do the blog. And she goes, you know, just do whatever you want. She goes, you got to shoot first. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's you it. Know? She goes, without shooting, it really doesn't matter much what you're going to do. <laughs> So you're right. So she's definitely right about that. But uh, well, you want to go into do some image shares? Sure. All right. You you want to go first? Sure. All right. All right. We get this queued up here. There yeah. we go. And click on this. And do, 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 do. there we go. All right. Cool. So um, basically, you know, like I said, I had images to share. Uh, shot using the the lens baby. Uh, Trio 28 and again if you head over to the to the website review of it You'll see some of these images look familiar But so this first shot is shot with the sweet optic and I know it's probably hard to tell that there is actually like a sweet spot in this shot But it's about dead center of the frame. So if you can see where my cursor is moving here 
that center of the frame and that you know if you zoom in on it is you know decently sharp i mean again it's not like the the 25 millimeter 1.2 from olympus you know it's not like that sharp but it's definitely portrait worthy and usable in, in that regard but it softens up on the periphery here and gives you this just wild like fuzzy bokeh it's it's pretty interesting look um yeah. the next one is the velvet optic and this one really doesn't have anything that is super sharp and i know this probably isn't like the best example of what you could do with it um but it was just happened to be a scene you know that i shot with all three of them in the row just because i wanted to see what kind of bokeh i would get from it um again the velvet optic would be something probably really well for like this you know dreamy um you know kind of portrait shoots that uh tracy puts together you know where she's like out in a field with a big velvet victorian yeah. couch or something um again it does something insanely wild with the with the bokeh here i, I kind of thought it was really cool um the last one is the twist optic and again it's not you know the most dramatic effect but you can see in the uh the christmas light bokeh dots up here that they do kind of have this like little rotation they're elongated you know laterally across the image you know as you get around to the sides you can see they have this sweeping swirl to them uh it's a little more pronounced if i would have been shooting in landscape orientation but with this scene i just happened to be shooting uh portrait but you can see the center of this frame though is actually really sharp it's like really sharp so uh that's the three optics again you know so you got the sweet the velvet and the twist mm -hmm. um the next shot again was just one shot um with with the with the lens baby but being that the lens baby lends itself to like you know a more creative side of things i thought maybe i should just be using the lens baby with the art filters you know why not so uh this is with the em the the top shots are with the em1 mark two or the pen f sorry the top three shots the shot that we're currently looking at here was with the twist optic setup and it is using the um the em1 mark ii with the vintage art filter I, I love that filter i need to get back to playing with that more um you were talking about pro capture for sports and stuff um mm -hmm. we're a gun family you know america whatever all that crap um we just like to go shoot take like to take the kids out shooting and i bought my son uh, his first gun got him a 12 gauge shotgun and um so we were setting up two liters with water in them and shooting them if you shoot those with a shotgun it's well it's a pretty dramatic effect mm -hmm. and i wanted to uh get the shot where the uh, two liters exploding from being shot and with pro capture it's just anybody can capture like that perfect you know precise moment using pro capture so that's all this was was just uh em1 mark ii 17 millimeter f 1.8 uh with pro capture on and you know i had 15 shots to choose from this was the one that was the winner so easy uh just last week before i started my new job i uh, took one of my final days of being unemployed to clear my head i guess and drive north about an hour and a half in search of snowy owls uh, i went to the same location last year with my wife and we had luck and we saw several snowy owls this year i didn't see anything <laughs> it was just lonely and cold and windy so i figured you know if it's cold and lonely and desolate selfie time right i mean whatever so uh, i just set the camera up on the tripod and um and fired off this selfie and the reason i shared this is well because it's you know a narcissistic selfie thing i guess but um just to show the dark sky this is the kind of look you'll end up getting with an um with an infrared converted camera this is not with that camera um but i have a processing technique that kind of gives you that look so just wanted to share that and this is with the em1 mark one with the 7 to 14 on it i had the mark two in my hand with the 300 millimeter attached mm -hmm. uh next shot i knew that this would be a an interesting one to post online because i knew that the feedback would be from both ends of the spectrum because it is it's grim you know it's pretty grim i again had all this free time over the last couple of weeks and you know it's kind of hard to to get your soul into into shooting you know when you're a little worried about your employment and stuff like that but it's good therapy to get out and shoot so i dropped my son off at school one day and the sun looked like it was just going to be awesome coming up so i took off out into the countryside and um come up over this rise in the road and i had interrupted lunch from some coyotes it looks like uh there was this deer carcass on the edge of the road and 
just the way I like to compose. I like to have something in the foreground kind of as an anchor point. Um, so I composed with this in the in the shot. And like I said, I got a lot of mixed feedback. I had half the people thought that it was an incredible shot and they loved how much detail there was and just how dramatic the scene was. And the other half of the people basically said, yuck, that's disgusting. So <laughs> it went both ways. I, I'm partial to it. It's nature. You know, I mean, life isn't always pretty. And this to me was uh, a little bit of a stretch there between the two. You know, you have the gruesomeness of death and the birth of a new day. So yeah. um, this past weekend, I'm sorry if I'm talking too fast. I don't want to bore everybody. But uh, this past weekend, went with a couple of friends of mine, um, David Bostador and Mark Miller, up to Grand Haven to shoot the winter weather as it was rolling in off of Lake Michigan. So we went to the pier in Grand Haven. Um, I'm in love with this shot. The level of clarity is just stupid awesome. I don't even know how to explain it. Uh, and I think they just had to lend itself to the fact that there was so much contrast in the scene. The reason the background is so dark gray, this is the middle of the afternoon, but the sky was so dark gray because there were these bands of heavy snow that would move in off of Lake Michigan and it was really intense. It was super windy. Um, wind chills were, I think at between 15 and 20 below off the lake, it was driving wind. And so what we'd have to do is, uh, wait for a band of snow to move through, come out from hiding, you know, which I was hiding in the ice, you know, in a big ice formation, the snow would stop. I'd hurry up and get outside, set the tripod up, fire off, you know, four or five shots as the next band of snow started to move in and then hide again. So this was one of the shots that I got there um, of the pier in Grand Haven starting to be covered in ice with this just to me, beautiful gray background. Um, Mark Miller, I'm going to pick on him. He lasted like 10 minutes and went back to the car. He said, it's too damn cold. <laughs> I think I stung out out there for about 40 minutes. Um, so upon leaving there, I told everybody that I knew a spot where there were some Highland cattle, Scottish Highland cattle. Um, they're a really cool looking cow. They have the uh, shaggy mop, you know, going. And again, uh, while it was snowing, you know, pretty bad on the lake shore, it seemed to be worse inland, you know. So we were basically dealing with, roads that were getting darn near impassable. Lucky Dave was driving his um, Honda Pilot with all-wheel drive, so that helped. Um, we waited for a snow band to come through and then started shooting the cows, and it just gave us this just awesome setup here with uh, the cows and the snowfall. Yeah, that's cool. Definitely a cool day. Definitely mm -hmm. fun shooting there. Um, the last two shots, somebody just messaged me on Facebook. I'm not looking, but I bet it's Mark giving me crap. Um, for picking <laughs> on him. So these next two shots um, are going to show you basically what an infrared camera does. This is the straight out of camera JPEG um, from that, from the infrared converted camera. And you look at it and you're like, what on earth? Um, but if you set up your white balance, like basically what I did in this next shot is I pointed it at the snow and set a custom white balance. And then you end up with a shot like that. So the sky is black. Um, and again, you know, we're sharing this over the internet. So, and it's not like, you know, some cool dramatic, you know, landscape shot. It's just like out in front of my house looking down the street. But um, something to note for people who are into, um, into landscape photography uh, and are interested in doing black and white landscapes, I would really, really highly recommend looking at an infrared conversion for uh, for one reason alone. I mean, you can get great work, you know, just converting to black and white. The shot I shared of myself earlier, I think it's a cool shot. It looks good. And that was just a full color shot converted to black and white. One of the benefits that you will get of shooting an infrared converted camera is uh, the haze that you see off in the distance is the more red wavelengths of light or those that spectrum of light uh, reflects off of particles in the air and creates haze. Infrared does not register that. Um, hmm. It'll cut through it. So you're definitely going to get a way more uh, sharp and clear uh, landscape photo. And you can actually, it sounds goofy, but you can actually see further in a, a landscape shot that is done um, with an infrared converted camera than you could in a standard camera. And they, they will also come out sharper as well. Hmm. Uh, and I guess I'm not going to get into the technicalities of how that works, but I'm going to plug another podcast on here. Uh, this Week in Photo, um, they have all these little sub-podcasts that's under the umbrella of This Week in Photo. One of them, I believe, is called Inside the Lens. 
Um, and I think their last episode, they had a gentleman on who specializes in infrared and ultraviolet and we'll call them alternate um, wavelengths of photography. <laughs> and he talks in depth about how that works and why that works. And, um, and I definitely am not going to dispute what he said. It, 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 it's true. So yeah. something to ponder for those looking at a, at a converting uh, camera. Um, if you have a spare body, I can't rem recommend it enough. And again, I'll put a link below uh, to life pixel. For those yeah, life pixel. And, and I would, and I can't recommend enough too. And I know you'd feel the same way that company, mm -hmm. I mean, the education they have on their website is crazy. Yeah. And then they work with you. If you have any issues after, um, I mean, just pick up the phone and call them there. I mean, they're like, I'm the guy that was working your camera. They're yep. really, yeah, and really if you get a conversion stuff. done too, they'll give you a free 30 minute one on one mm -hmm. lesson. You know, they'll actually mm -hmm. video chat with you and say, okay, you know, what, what kind of stuff do you like to shoot? Um, right. You know, I'll help you set up a custom white balance. I'll help you set up a custom Lightroom preset, you know, to, to edit your images. So yeah. they're a super cool company. And you get like a free 12 by something, 12 by 16, or I don't know what the size is, uh, uh, silver gelatin print of one of your IR photos too. So. Pretty cool. Company. Oh, yeah, really cool. Really cool. Yeah, so I'm excited to have that have him on yeah, next month or so. That'll be yeah. cool to have him on. All right, let's see. I'm going to uh, go into here. I'm sorry, i got to change the application window thing, don't I? Yep. All right. <laughs> okay, do you see all the cars? Um, no. Yes, no. now I do. Now okay, I do. okay. okay. Okay, good. So, yeah, this is our, our, our product shot. These are not cars that we sell. <laughs> <laughs> they really aren't um we're we're designing uh putting together a recruiting website and you know we just we had to come up with something that was automotive and still showed like a uh, diversity within the automotive business so uh here's a bunch of cars different colors diversity right so yeah we uh which we're just trying to stretch how we come up with stuff but uh it, it lends itself to you know and, and i'll i'll uh I'll side with you, Jamie. I don't know how I could ever be a product photographer. I'm not too sure. <laughs> There's just so much that goes in. Yeah, and this isn't even good at all. But, I mean, the light sideways every which way. So you eliminate shadows. And yeah. It just it's crazy. All right, let's go into basketball now. Yeah. Okay. So so uh, I've got a real good friend who I, uh, if, if you've listened or you know a little bit about my previous life before photography I was a basketball coach for 20 years and I've got a great friend who we coached together for about six uh, past European player and his daughter when we coached that that little girl right there that's six foot two and in ninth grade she was um, four and five years old uh, when we were coaching <laughs> together my daughter's team um, maybe six or seven you know, when we started, but, uh, yeah, she's pretty big now at six foot two. She's, she's, I think she's already got the 10 division one offers or something. It's, it's a, big, wow. a big East offer this week. Um, cra crazy big. And she's probably going to end up being about six, four so. Um, but we're, he wants to, we're putting together, um, to do a fat head. And, uh, you know, the big fat heads, the life-size uh, stickers that you put on, because he owns a training facility and it has been has owned it now for three, four years and has done great, called Great Grant Basketball Training Facility. Look it up. It's really a cool place. Um, but uh, he wants to get a life-size uh, of his uh, daughter there. So we're putting it, I'm trying to put together some stuff. So when uh, you say Micro Four Thirds can't print big, it it's going to be life-size. <laughs> And uh, the Fathead company that actually makes those Fatheads, which I I should have known this, but I didn't, they're right out of Detroit. They're right here in Detroit, the company that makes all those things. So um, they'll actually print them for you. And and once I get uh, get all that, I'll, uh, I'll get some shots and we'll share them on the show, how it all went and that. Um, and, and also I wanted to show you another. This is, again, Pro Capture. Um, I had a lot of lights around her, though. This isn't in a game of course <laughs> this is this was all shot with a bunch of led lights behind her and and in front of her from coming up from top so um so it makes the pro capture even better but this one was straight out just lights in the gym this next one and her, that's her coming at me uh my choice about 15 or 16 shots and it just clarity um you know i mean this is coming at you so if you ever a sports shooter um the sideways shots you could do 
decent with the EM1 if, if you knew how to follow properly and had the right settings. Um, but coming at you, you, you could never get them right. And that's the difference now. Um, I mean, I'm just blown away that I can have out of a 15 run, I'll have eight eight keepers. So now what I do is I just look for, okay, where, where do I have her eyes up? Am I seeing the great grand basketball? You know, I get to choose all these different things and hey, it's all in focus too. How about that? So um, th this is really sharp there. Now the next one here, these are the 13 shots that I wanted to show. This is in a very, very old gym. My uh, my older son is a, a teacher, he's a math teacher, high school is also coaches of varsity basketball. And this is team here. Uh, the Warhawks from uh, Westerville, but in any case, he um, they're playing in a gym in a tournament. The entire thing has a red cast to it. It's just horrible. And of course, the team they're playing has got red uniforms. That didn't help. Um, it just it's an old, very poorly lit gym, like like most high school gyms can be. Um, so here we are, and I wanted to give you this. We're shooting at twenty five hundred ISO. Uh, this whole series of shot is uh, 500th of a second at 2,500 ISO with the 40 to 150 and, of course, caught in pro capture. So, as you know, you're probably about 14 shots. I'm going to share 13 of them, and I'm going to go through them pretty quick because this was, you know, when you're shooting basketball, these kind of runaway dunks and stuff don't happen constantly in high school, but but this was a pretty awesome one to catch. and. You know, and, and I could share any of them blowing up too, but uh, I'm just blown away as we continue to go on. I mean, just you get the clarity on his face. And what's so cool about being able to keep everything clear is you watch the crowd behind him and you start seeing everybody's arms go up, parents' arms go up. You see the kid here screaming, you know, I mean, you, you get all this stuff in focus. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. You know, and it's like, holy crap <laughs> you know i mean all of a sudden you're you're, you're like you're going that this didn't happen <sighs> you know and so yeah i was really really excited with with pro capture and 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 it's tough to do in a gym i was talking to someone today on facebook and, you know you get these gyms where you got to shoot at 2500 iso um you know i don't want to i'd love to be able to jump up to 640th or a second or higher but you, you just can't it just gets yeah. too too full of grain um so and then i wanted to show one last thing here was uh i i do have this going this is my project my chicago squared project where i'm going to study and then work and shoot everything in square format in chicago but this this logo which which is actually some of my images here but all designed by uh, Seth. Seth, how do you say? Is it Dimestra? Dimestra. Yep. All right. All right. I got it. But uh, Seth is, I know, a real good friend of Jamie's, and uh, you know that's where I met him from. Um, fantastic designer, uh, graphic arts designer. If you ever need anyone to do that work, but uh, he designed me up a logo here, and you'll hear more and more throughout the year on, on that for sure. So let's uh, let me get back, and let's see. There we go. Okay. Yeah, those. Uh, I hope Justin was watching tonight because yeah. he really needed to see those basketball shots. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so, that, quick question. Um, so I've only done uh, indoor basketball like a couple of times, and I dealt with situations where it seemed like as they were traveling from one end of the court to the other, you would have like it'd be light and then it would be dark, and it'd be light and it would be dark. Like the light was not consistent from one bank of lights to the next, did you have to fight with stuff like that? Too, yeah. Or? Especially in this gym. Yeah. yeah. And then these, these lights, whatever type they were, I guess I should have had you there. You're the light expert now. Um, they're like the old, um, vapor, yeah, the sodium, vapor, vapor sodium yeah. ones. So they have that horrible flicker. Yeah. So you never really noticed that before. With Until the you're one. Right. Now with pro capture, uh, I've got series that where the guy is perfectly fine and in focus and then just dark. dark yeah. Like, what the heck happened? Oh, I didn't have a <laughs> <Yeah>. flash on. It, <laughs> yeah. And then he's back, then he's back. I mean, yeah. it's just such a horrible lit gym. I mean, yeah. maybe one of the worst I've seen. It's an old college. Uh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. I have to put him in touch with the company I work with. Yeah, maybe I'm thinking that. I mean. <laughs> retrofit him. We're doing a lot of school gymnasiums too. Are you? LED oh, upgrades, yeah. yeah Several so, in the Detroit area we've done. These new so, ones are cool crazy nice and i when i was shooting college like college ones are always really nice but yep. uh 
yeah, you can get your ISO down to fifteen hundred in some of those college ones. And yeah. if you get on the sideline and and you get in the right spot, but I, I agree. I think that's something you have to watch for. Is you got to you got to sort of pick a spot on the court where you're going to yeah. take a lot of shots from. Yeah, and, he, and you'll find a, one or two players that love that spot, and you sort of like focus on those guys. <laughs> yeah. You know, but yeah. So who's ever out there uh, shooting basketball, and I know Bob Panic can't wait the football season next year. It's going to be crazy nice. And then I don't know, just you know, join uh, our Facebook group that won the the uh, EM uh, one Mark II enthusiast. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, grown to uh, from like three or 400. Now we're at 940, 950. Yep. Like in a matter of, you know, four weeks, uh, <laughs> there are some great shots being put out there. Oh yeah. my gosh. The birds and stuff. Yeah. The birding shots are just blowing my mind. I'm like, Oh yeah. my God. This is I know. I mean, if you, um, if you're a birder and you, you don't have this camera, I, I, I wouldn't spend another dime on any DSLR. Yeah. It just wouldn't even make sense now if you could get this camera. So, yeah. No. But uh, yeah, that's it. And I think um, one other thing we talk is that yeah, it's the next show we're going to have Jim Nix on. Yep, from Austin. Uh, Jim's a big uh, proponent of the Mac Fun, and he does a lot of the Mac Fun processing. Uh, the they do uh, Aurora HD, Aurora right? HDR, and Lumen. Uh, yeah, what is it? Luminar. Lum Luminar. Yeah, Luminar. Luminar. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Luminar, the new Luminar program. Uh, he's going to be on talking a lot about that and, and his photography because he travels the world. Oh, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he just came back from Paris and all, all over the place, Italy. Um, but it's just amazing shots. Uh, great guy, and uh, but he hails from the, the Austin area, so everybody's pretty cool, usually from Austin. <laughs> <laughs> or weird. Or both. They are weird. And that's what makes them cool. Yep, they right? keep it weird. Yeah. <laughs> All so right. that's well, about it. Yeah, I'd say that that's about it. Um, yeah. you know, like I said, we'll put uh put links in the the show description to uh, Life Pixel for infrared conversion. I'll put a link there for uh, my review of the Lens Baby Trio Twenty Eight. And uh, I think that's it for now. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. And uh, something else that I'll just mention really quickly here. Um, I've been talking with uh, Chris Gampett of the Full Blogger and looking at maybe doing some workshops here in Michigan, some short workshops, um, affordable, uh, fun. Uh, I'll just I'll just let it out there right now. What I've been talking with him about doing is basically what I would call a lighthouse crawl. Um, there, are, well, <laughs> you saw what I shot tonight. I mean, we have a lot of lighthouses in Michigan, and it's definitely feasible to over the course of like um, like a full day start off at one lighthouse and work our way down the coast and hit two more lighthouses and wrap up uh, at sunset at one of the lighthouses. So again, something to, to pay attention to. And I know Chris mentioned to me that, you know, that there's the potential there, maybe something with Mike uh, as far as street shooting in the Detroit area. Chris Gampett again, runs the photographer is really interested in Detroit and the uh, the growth that Detroit is seeing in the the culture and scene over there. So uh, just That's pay attention cool. to this podcast. Uh, there'll be news about that stuff coming up. I guess All that's right, it. Man. I'm going to go <laughs> down and hang out with my family. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Take it easy, everybody. See you.